Let's pray. Father, Lord, um, we come to you, and Father, we ask that your spirit would just lead us and guide us because, uh, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. But with you, Father, we can do everything. And uh, thank you, Lord, for just breaking me down to the simplicity of, of uh, just talking to you, Lord, because you're the, one that, you're the only one that really can do something about it no matter what it is. Father, I pray that your spirit, Lord, that the eyes and the ears of the people that are here and their hearts would be open to receive. Lord, that all it is is you just wanting to, uh, to commune with them, Lord, and talk with them and, and have a relationship, Father. And we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, what I did was I went into my Hebrew Strongs and um, I looked up to pray, um, prayed, and prayer. And, you know, and as uh, it kind of brought me to a lot. Um, but in the original text, you know, to pray, um, in, the, in the Hebrew Strongs, it's the word ne, N-A, and it's 4994. It is the mark of an entreaty or an exhortation to entreat someone for something. It, it just simply means, you know, a request from God. God, you know, I got some things going on. Can you help me? That's, so that's what pray means. Prayed um, in the Hebrew Strongs, um, they got another number for it. It's 6419. It's Pelel. Um, and it means that one has prayed or I've prayed for you, like Jesus said, it means uh, to meditate or that someone has intervened on your behalf. That means, you know, in my life, and I'm sure in y'all life, lives that are here, people have been praying for you. Um, little short paragraph. This is what prayer means. Prayer in its simplest form is to request something from the Father that you are in need of with the expectation of receiving what you have petitioned Him for. Amen. A true need will even beg God for its necessity. That's, that's it. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. Prayer is just you having a conversation with your Father. That's, that's it. Um, there are different kinds of prayers. In Matthew 6.6, 6, it talks about secret prayers. This is where you go into your, pro into your closet or you get alone by yourself. Prayers that you don't want nobody to know about that you pray that you pray, and Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, your father who sees you in secret, you know, he'll hear your prayers and reward you. So whatever it is, it might be that you're trying to overcome something in your life. So you go off. You don't tell anybody about it. You just go off and you pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to help you. Um, there are family prayers where families get together and pray, and that's in Acts chapter 10. We see that in Cornelius' house. Cornelius was recognized, you know, because of his giving and his time that he would get together with his family and pray. They're group prayers. And um, that's in Matthew chapter 18. The Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. So we can get together, you know, any two as laying their hand on something, you know, and asking the Lord for it you know, um, it'll be granted unto them. Um, then there are um, public prayers, like in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul talks about that, like praying openly in front of people. And some people pray with the Spirit, like my mom was doing earlier. 
and, and some with understanding. They might come forth praying in an unknown tongue, and then they come out with the interpretation so that the whole congregation can be edified. Um, there's also um, different parts of prayer. And meaning that you can also pray to God to ask Him for something, but then there's prayers of thanksgiving. You know, that my wife and my mom and those that you have been praying for finally come to the Lord that, you know, you offer up spiritual sacrifices, praise of thanksgiving unto the Lord because a need that you had had been met and you had, you know, it's just, man, you know, it's like, hey, Dad, thank you. Man, thank you. You know, I didn't deserve it, but you gave it to me. We just get really simple with the Lord. There is, in James 5, in 14 and 15, you know, it, it talks about intercession, intercessory prayer. Those that are sick, let them call for the elders of the church, let them come and anoint with oil, and let them pray. And the prayer of faith that is prayed over the brethren, they will recover. And that's, that intercession is when you're actually praying on the behalf of somebody else, you're interceding for them, for others, or whatever it is that you're interceding for. Um, sometimes we want to pray for somebody, and somebody's sick, we'll, we'll bring one of their family members up here and pray over them, you know, and, and believe that God is going to do it. Um, it was much easier back then to pray and for things to happen because these people were in serious need. And that is, and we'll get into that. You know, um, there's another one that is um, um, in 1 Timothy 2, Paul talks about, you know, um, with prayers and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. You know, that supplication is, you know, when you really just when there's been times in my life that God has woke me up and man I just prayed it wasn't me I just was really making intercessory and supplications it's praying when you really desperately need something you really just you know it's not the prayers of asking the father I want a new truck or I'm talking about a need you know because the Father, it says He hears your prayers and He knows your needs. He also knows your wants. So if some of your prayers are not answered, we've got to weigh them out whether they're needs or wants. And, um, but anyway, um, there's prayers of confession in 1 John 1, 9. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is prayers of confession. The Bible says, confess ye one to another that your sins may be forgiven. You know, I made mistakes before and told, you know, other brothers so that my conscience would be, you know, my son has come to me and shared some things with me. And after he shared them with me, he says, Dad, I'm so glad I, I, I talked to you and told you because, you know, I feel free now. I feel free. Um, there's prayers of adoration. You know, when you just prayer and praise, just adore, for, adore Him for who He is. We know we just let our prayer and praise, almost the same thing, go up to the Father. There are personal requirements um, uh, for a person uh, in prayer. Personal requirements. Number one, if you want your prayers answered, in Psalms chapter 66, it says you must have a pure heart. You know, you hear the world saying, yeah, I prayed and asked the Lord that he healed my daddy or my mom and they still died. Well, man, number one is, is he your father that you're asking? Because if you're not his son, well, then who are you praying to? You know, is there a pure heart there? We need to, you know, check our heart. Has God taken out that heart that was wicked and put in His heart? You know, what is the motive of the prayer? You know, that's why I won't follow Him. He didn't heal my mama. I heard that. I can't even tell you how many times. 
you know? Um, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, it says you must be believing. You have to believe when you pray for something. that When you ask for it, you're going to receive it. You know? A lot of prayers, we just, you know, sling them up there with a shotgun, boom, or shoot them up there with a slingshot. Yeah, 30 or 6 prayers. You know, you really ain't expecting anything because you really expect it. You don't expect him to do anything. And if he does it, you're like, wow, I can't believe it. Man, you just said there's no belief in you just now. There's no belief. Come on, brother. Um, prayers in John chapter 14, verse 13, that the Bible says that anything we ask of the Father in his name, in Christ's name, they'll be given. But, you know, we got to go back to, you know, you have to believe it. You have to go back to, what are you asking him for? I mean, a lot of people, you know, I was stumped by a brother this week when I asked him, you know, about prayers. And thinking he was going to say one thing, he threw something else at me. And I was like, wow, you know, because, you know, what he said he was asking the Lord for was understanding and wisdom. And, you know, like more of him. Not asking for things to heap upon himself, but for his spiritual man. You know? Um, also, um, are these needs according to God's will that you're asking for? Because in 1 John 5, 14, it says that, you know, if you're asking for something from God, you know... Jesus had said that he will grant it, it, he'll grant what it is that you're asking him for if it's according to his purpose and will. He says that in Matthew 6 about seek first the kingdom of God and then his, and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added unto you. Amen. But you better back up into the sea what all of these things are that he's talking about in, John, in, in Matthew chapter 6 that's going to be added unto you. You know, because, you know, either we're going to be seeking what it is that he wants or we're seeking our own will. There's general requirements for prayer. Um, I know the Bible says in one place, I didn't write it down, that, you know, if there's strife between the husband and the wife, you know, your, your prayers will be hindered. Amen. It says. Amen. You don't want strife between, make amends with your wife before you pray. You know? Because there's a block there. Because you two are one. Um, you have to have a, a forgiving spirit. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14. You know, if you want your prayers answered, you have to be one that has a forgiving spirit. You're asking the Lord to do something, but you won't forgive your brother. Don't let that man think he's going to receive anything from God. Um... Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, it says that prayer should be with simplicity, Jesus said. Not like the Pharisees and Sadducees, who for their, rep, you know, vain repetition of prayers, you know, think they're going to be heard. So it's not about repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Amen. A, a prayer that maybe someone made up, like the Jabez prayer. You know, I, I'm sorry. Lord, lengthen my borders. Stretch out my tents. Man, that's saying, that seems like that's for you. Now, Jabez was blessed by God because of who he was and what he was doing. And God lengthened him and stretched him out. And here we claim that and think we can repeat it and receive it. No. Man, I mean, it's like my son coming to ask me to do something when I, I know... Oh, come on, man. You're just doing something somebody else done. You want me to bless you for that? You know, when I know you really, your heart's not in it. You know, and you're just wanting for, you know, self-gain. Um, in Luke chapter 18, you know, it, it talks about that prayer, the general requirements of prayer. I mean, you must be humble and, and quick to repent. I mean, if you look at it, there really needs to be a check within yourself. Number one, about where you are with the Lord, where you stand with Him, and um, what you're actually asking Him for. Is it for you, or is it for His will? 
You know what I mean? Is it in His will that your family be saved? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, is, it, is, is it in His will that maybe you need something for ministry or to do something to further the kingdom and you're asking Him for it? Is that in His will? Yes. Because it's not your kingdom you're trying to build. It's His. Um, the other thing is in Matthew 18, 19, and 20 that there needs to be the unity of, of believers. That when you come together and you pray, man, we all have to be in one accord toward what it is we're asking the Lord for. If there's yeah. dissension among us, well then, you know, that ain't good. We want to be in line. You know, my focus is Jesus Christ and Him alone. And I just, I constantly and continually asking the Lord, Lord, show me where you want me to be, where you want, what you want me to do, where you want me to go, because the life that I live is not mine. It's His. It belongs to Him. Um, we learn about prayer in Luke 18, 1 through 8, with tenacity. What is that? Tenacity. That means keep asking. Right? Remember, this tenacity in Luke 18 is about the woman with, in a court. And a judge, and he's like, man, give that woman what it is that she needs. She's wearying me. You know, that, what's tenacity? Another uh, point of tenacity is Hannah. Hannah petitioned the Lord for a son over and over and over. And Eli's like, you know, whatever it is you asking the Lord for, be it granted unto you. And she's like, no, my Lord, no, my Lord, you don't understand. I'm asking him, you know, for a son, I'm not, you know, drunk or anything like that. I'm in all that's going and weeping and crying. I'm looking for a son. And Eli, whose name means my God, granted her her request because she faithfully went to the temple asking for a son. And she said, Father, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. Amen. She just wanted something to give back to God. Not for her own gain. And she did. Gave him back to God. When he become of age, gave him over to Eli. You know, that's uh, also prayers, not only with tenacity, but with anticity, prayers can be made. What is that? Well, in uh, Matthew 7, 7 through 11, you know, a friend who lives right next door, um, you know, a friend of this man, Jesus gives us this parable that a friend, a journal, uh, who came from afar, you know, came to his house at night and it was late, and he didn't have any food to give his friend who just come off of a journey, so he went next door to his other friend, a friend of his that lived next door, knocked on the door and said, hey, a, a man came off a journey, a good friend of mine, I need some bread to feed him. Go away, it's 12 o'clock at night, my kids are sleeping. But, it says that because that man knew that he was a friend, he kept knocking on the door. No, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm not leaving until, you know, Jeremy, you give me some bread. I don't care if you got to wake the whole house up. That's, ten that's tenacity. I mean, intensity. You know, he knows, number one, he knows his friend that's outside, he ain't going away until he gets the bread. And number two, he knows he ain't leaving the door until his friend come gives him something. So is it okay to ask again? Yes. You know, weary him. It's all up to you, how you feel. And, you know, I guess how important that thing is to you. Um, the other thing is, um, in Matthew 6, verse 7, prayer doesn't have to be with many words. The Bible, Jesus said, for the Spirit already knows what it is that you need. Amen. You know, in, and in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, you can pray unceasingly. What is that? How can you possibly pray unceasingly? You know what? It, it's just always on your mind. Man, Lord, my brother, you know, man, Lord, just help him. It's something that don't never leave your mind. Um, now, let's see why prayers aren't answered. 
prayers that are not answered because of what? Number one, sin. If you live a life of sin and you asking, the Bible says, let that man who asks, he ain't going to receive nothing from the Lord. Um, in James chapter 4, verse 3. Let me read that one. James 4, verse 3. I'm going to open my Bible. And you know, you, you, you find yourself praying when really there's, you know, a need. And, and it shouldn't only be then. And the more that we pray and commune with the Father, it is, it, the easier it is. I mean, I have problems just getting people to bless the food. I mean, it's, you think about it. You, you think about that in its simplest terms is, you feel funny thanking your daddy, you know, who gave you that. Because because you're not used to talking to him. And we'll get into that in a minute. James, James chapter 4, verse 3. It says, uh, I'm going uh, to start in verse 4. I mean, chapter 4, verse 1. What is the source of quarrels, James, and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and you do not have. So you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. James really, the whole book of James gets into, you know, um, so that's really, it's, you know, Selfishness will hinder your prayers. Amen. What is it that you're doing it for? Um, doubt in James 1, verse 5 and 7. The Bible says that, you know, that when you ask, you know, don't ask with, in doubt, Amen. not believing, you know, because the one who doubts is like a wave tossed to and fro here today, back here, back. Let that man who asks, he ain't going to receive nothing. Um, the other thing that hinders your prayers is disobedience. Proverbs 28, 9. Come on. Your disobedience to whatever it is that God has called you to do. If God has told you to do something and you're not doing it. Don't expect your prayers to be answered. And probably when you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you're not asking God for anything anyway. You only find out that people are asking God for something when they're all the way down at the end of their rope, you know, and they, you know, they, you know, not that it's a bad thing, but when they've put out or lost something or then they want to pray. But the problem is they don't want to do what's right prior to that. Right? Disobedience will hinder your prayer. Uh, and also, not treating your fellow brothers and sisters like they're supposed to be treated. How you talk to one another. It's called inhumanity. How you speak one to another. You know? A, a perfect example of that is that when, when John has a revelation of Jesus Christ, Jesus wants to talk to John about the condition of the church and tell him to repent. Amen. You know? The other thing is uh, pride. Luke chapter 18, verse 11, 12, and 14. Pride. Man, that'll stop prayer. You receiving anything from God in a heartbeat. You know, being lifted up, proud. A boaster. You know, man... Humility. Um, I got right here, Luke, read uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. So let's read that. Luke 
and we're almost done. Luke chapter 13. And I'm reading in the NASB. It's a little easier to read. I'm sorry. Luke 11, uh, verse 1 through 13. It says, um, Luke 11 and 13. Luke 11. Okay, uh, instruction about prayer. Um, it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. So here's the establishment of God's kingdom that they, he's teaching them how to pray that God's kingdom will be established. Um, uh, your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone uh, who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. So in order to, you know, uh, you have to forgive people in order for your prayers to be answered. And lead us not into temptation. So that's something you can pray each and every day. Lord, man, don't lead me into temptation today. Then he said unto them, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside he answers and says, Do not bother me. The door has already been shut and my children are in bed. I cannot... Um, get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So persistence will get you what it is that you're asking for, right? So I say to you, and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. You have to seek for it. You see, number one, you know, this friend was seeking something. Food, right? Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. He wasn't seeking bread for himself. He was seeking bread for others, right? That's what he was seeking for. It wasn't for himself. Now suppose one of, your, one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He would not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he would not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now you see, the thing we should be asking for is spiritually. The things that is going to benefit His kingdom. How many people ask the Lord, you know, for the gifts of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, tongues, interpretation, and wisdom, faith, and all of these? How many people are asking for those things? But we really think we don't need those. We really only ask for the things that we think we need to build, to do what it is, or to help us pay our bills next week. Or, you know, when man, the Lord says, if we're walking with Him, don't even worry about those things. The things we really should be asking Him for is things that is going to help Him accomplish His will. And number one is the Holy Spirit. Because He's the one that God has given all the gifts to. <laughs> right? Um, let's see. Um, ask for the gifts that God has laid up in store in heaven so you can do His will. Because that's what it's really all about. So that you and I can do what it is that God has called us to do.
That's why Jesus prayed frequently and often. He was to, you know, empower him to do what it is that God had called him to do. In Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Number one, is your whole life about seeking first his kingdom? What is his kingdom? People. Building his temple inside of people. The kingdom of God is within, Jesus said. It's not without. Seek first to build his kingdom. So the kingdom that you really need to be building, seeking first, is building people. That's what it's about. Because that's what God is interested in. And God will bless you from there. Um, there's different postures the Bible talks about. You can stand in Acts 1. You can kneel in Ezra chapter 9. Sitting, they prayed, First Chronicles. Bowing, Exodus chapter 3. Timothy says, with hands lifted up, they prayed. So you, all of these, there isn't any, isn't any certain way to pray. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. If, you know, one thing that hinders prayer, probably one of the biggest things in the world that hinders prayer is you. You. Your flesh will stop you from talking to the Father. Amen. Because your flesh will say, that's stupid. There's people watching. There's people looking. You're your biggest enemy from prayer. And if you really believed prayer, you know, you would pray more. If you really believed that there was a God that listened to you, that loved you, and cared about you. You know, even with my, even with my own son, you know, my son being raised up or children being raised up, they want to do their own will. But a, a child is raised in a house so that you can teach them to do their mother and father's will. What is the will of the father? The father likes the house clean. He's got this going on. He's doing that. And the, the natural will of the son is to rebel. Man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But right now, you're instilling in him to be obedient to what it is that the father wants. Until there comes a time, I remember when there came a time that my dad used to tell me all the time and bust my behind because I wouldn't feed the dogs correctly or cut the grass or do the things I was supposed to do. But there came a time in my life when I realized that, you know what, man, before my daddy gets home, I'm going to cut the grass. Then I remember the day I'd done that, and my daddy drove up. And when he pulled up in a, in, in, in a truck, he had a big old smile on his face because of the first time that now I was helping him do in his family, in his house, what it is that he needed to do. And that's, when we, that's how we have to line our will up to our Father's will. And if we don't train them now, Amen. it's going to be harder later. Oh, yeah. And they don't understand that now. But because of all the discipline and the law and everything that was done to us while we were children, I understand now how to submit unto, unto authority. Because, you know, now... Uh, I just went from one dad to another dad. And it's never been about me. It's never been about me. And now I'm teaching my son so that later he can do what it is that his father has called him to do. So, um, let me read this little thing to you I wrote, and this is it. Um, in the beginning, Adam communed with God, and he had fellowship with him. He had fellowship with him. He, you know, talked with him and, and all that stuff. There was never, not one issue between Adam and the Father. One day God comes to see him and talk to Adam, but when he calls out, there's no response. 
once before, Adam enjoyed the talks with God, but now there is silence. Silence is not a sign of virtue. Silence is not a sign of virtue, but of an evil conscience. That's why the importance Paul hammered in the New Testament was about your conscience. Yes. For conscience sake. Yes. For conscience sake. Why? Because your conscience will separate you, will separate your communication with the Father. Why? Because of guilt. Yes. You won't want to talk to Him. Man, I ain't been doing what I'm supposed to. I ain't going to... I ain't talking to the Lord. But the whole time, He's calling out to you. Amen. So, but now there is silence. Why? Because Adam knew he had sinned. Sin will separate us from communicating with God because of our guilt. But God still is trying to speak to us through His Word. And the reason we neglect it is because the light exposes our sin and we don't want to have to face it. You know, you're going to find out if you ever go to pray about someone in your life that, Lord, if you just do something, you don't do something with that woman. I'm going to have to. I'm going to be able to tell you right now if you heard from God. If God, if you hear, you know, um, well, let's talk about you. That's God. Because you're going to find out that before it's all over with, the real issue is you. And God wants to work through you so that he can work to get to her or somebody else. Um, but now through Christ, we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. Now there's no more separation between us and the Father. Even in our conscience when we feel like, you know, we, uh, to find help that we need no matter what. No matter how great or how small it is, we can go to a father. Maybe, maybe you're praying for you or a loved one. Or a need, maybe for boldness or forgiveness or for direction or understanding or whatever it is you need according to his will. Adam and Eve, though uh, Adam and Eve thought they needed the other tree, but that brought death. They were convinced by Satan, they needed something else. And uh, they already had what they needed. But they believed a lie that you need more to be like God. And then I wrote here, if you can understand this, I know it's, it might be kind of hard. But I wrote, to know is not to be known. To know something doesn't mean you know. I don't care how much revelation you think you know. I don't care how much you know about Jesus. Just because you know something doesn't mean you're known. And that's where the Pharisees and Sadducees had missed it. Because they thought that they knew the Lord. But they didn't know Him. They knew about Him. The only way that you can know Him is you have to have a communication. You have to have personal communication with Him. Not through me, not through your wife, not through your husband, not through your children or your uncle or whoever it might be. It has to be, you know, God calling out. You know, Amen. Hey, Jeremy. You know, what are you going to do? 
Yeah, I am. So prayer in its simplest form. You know, God is calling us to just, you know, there's nothing that separates us anymore from Him. Amen. Just because you feel a certain way won't hinder your communication with the Lord unless you allow it. But God is calling us in, you know, to pray. If you want to say to communicate with Him, you know, whatever it might be for. But that's, you know, we need to pray more. We need to talk to the Lord more. And how we know if it's Him or not? Well, he, His Word. It's through His Word. I'm, listen, God speaks to me when I sit down and open His Word and I begin to read. All of a sudden, things begin to speak to me. It's Him speaking to me. Because this is His Word. So, the Lord knows what we need. So, today, Father, I'm going to encourage you guys to pray more. If there's a chance that you can pray, be the first one to say it. Hey, let me, I'll pray. Open up that communication line, you know, get it clear. And I just want to, um, I feel like this is a, a, a new beginning f for the church, for us as a people, as a group. Amen. Um, and I want to acknowledge, you know, um, to my father, which I've already done, not if I've done anything wrong. I know I have. Not something in, I could point out that I led a certain way. I know that I fall short. And I just, I ask the Lord to forgive me. And I ask you to forgive me. You know, if, uh, and I miss it. But, man, more than anything else, I want, I want God's hand here. I want open communication between us and the Father. I don't want anything hindering, you know, what it is that God has called us to do. I'm not looking to build a big city. You know, in fact, the commission of the Lord is to build into you guys and hopefully, you know, churches will set up in other places. You know, and because that's really what it's all about. So, Father, as, uh, just as, uh, as, as one that you've placed in your body, Father, Lord, I ask that you would forgive us, Lord, and, and forgive me. And, um, Lord, help us to draw close to you and ask for the things that we need according to your will, not our will, Father. And you know the things that we need. Lord, I thank you for the provisions that you made that we're even able to come here and gather together as a family, Lord. And Lord, you know the needs that we have in our life. And um, you know the, uh, our, the, our loved ones, Father, that are out there. I pray that you would um, just put into your people a desire that every time they think about their loved one, Lord, they would just lift them up to you. Lord, you know those who are sick and afflicted amongst us. Lord, your word says, come and let us pray. And we know that Lord, they, uh, they'll be healed according to your will. Because we know according to your word, that is your will, that people be healed, that people be saved. And Father, another thing your word said, Lord, is that you're the one that, that calls men unto yourself. So, well, we just ask that, that you would uh, call people to yourself, Lord. Bring in the harvest, Father. And help us, Father. Lead us God and guide us into the way that you would have us to go yeah. as just part of the body right here, Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.